How's it? Hi! How's it going, guys? How you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I hope everybody's having a good time and a good day. You know what I'm saying? Will, how are you? Hey, everywhere. Everything hurts. I'm probably not going to make it to the end of the show. What's wrong? I don't, I don't know. I'm 34. I think that's anything. what's wrong. <laughs> I, it's been a weird weekend. Saturday, I got this really weird pain in like my back and my neck from doing nothing but cleaning my grill. Um, it's very labor it's the intensive. Type, it, it wasn't even that. You know, you know that pain you get like when you sleep on your neck wrong and you wake up yes. and get that really bad. It, it was that all on my back. But from cleaning my grill, which wasn't that hard to do, and then uh, Sunday, I felt like I pulled my arm out of my socket, even though I didn't. Uh, and now it feels like the same thing's happening with my knee. So just let that be a lesson to all you kids out there. Just, just don't get old. Just Logan is run it. When you turn like a certain age, just, just don't do anything. Just that's it. It's time. It's yeah. time to call out. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody else is uh, not in pain today. <laughs> Audio is not in sync with the stream. No, that's just. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there's nothing to talk about today. So we're making a tier list of all the best consoles. Uh, well, no, we're making a tier list of just all of the consoles that have ever existed. Um, but first, as always, there's PlayStation and Xbox free games for the month. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the start of the month, which means that the good lords over at Sony and Microsoft are gifting you free games if you are subscribed to their online subscription services. Um, so we got, of course, free games for PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Games with Gold. So as long as you're members of those services. And as always, we start with Sony. Um, and it's not, not a flashy month for Sony, I would say. No, so starting off, not. yeah. So all these games are available today. Uh, starting off on the PlayStation 5, you get Hunter's Arena Legends. Um, and on the PS4, you get Plants vs. Zombies Battle uh, for Neighborville and Tennis World Tour 2. Hunter's Arena looks like, it looks pretty cool. It looks like, a, oh, I've seen this. <laughs> It looks like a Monster Hunter meets like Neo or something. Yeah. I keep getting cool. this confused. Oh, it's also on PS4. Look at that. It's PS4 and PS5. Oh. Um, I keep getting this confused with like the. I forgot what the name of it. There's a game called Hunters something on the GameCube and original Xbox that I know is not this. Okay. <laughs> But I just remember, like, every magazine had an ad for that particular Hunter's game. Uh, and that's all I can think about when I see the game hunt, name Hunter in conjunction with video games. It looks really cool. It's uh, Battle Royale, but you're fight it looks like he's fighting NPCs. Yeah. Uh, uh, th the 30-player PvP and PV combat-based Battle Royale is set in an ancient age in which human humanity... Battles each other as well as a grown legion of demons. Okay. I mean, free. I mean, free with PlayStation Plus. So that might be worth yeah. checking out. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also uh, Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville on PS4, which is like their follow up to Garden Warfare and that sub series of Plants vs. Zombie games. Wow. Fun. Uh, cool. <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies is a very good iPhone game. A very good <laughs> iPhone game. Yeah, from I don't 2010. Know how, I don't know how well it translates to uh, a, a PvE shooter. Yeah, I don't know. It's, something weird happened after after the original Plants for Zombies. I think it was qu acquired by what EA, and then uh, well, it was it was made by PopCap, which I, yes, I think was then acquired by EA. And then they and, and then they went wild with it. They were like, "The yeah. new thing is online PvP shooters. You're a shooter now." <laughs> and from what I've heard, Garden Warfare wasn't bad. 
but I mean, Plants vs. Zombies was a, was a strategy game. <laughs> yeah, it was not so, that. Yeah. I'm trying to see what uh, the what the frame rate of Hunter's Arena is because now I'm all about high frame rate games on the PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X. Go. Will. Uh, speaking of that game, Griffin X in the chat. Yes, I was thinking of Hunter Reckoning from the PlayStation from the GameCube and Xbox era of games. Thank you for that. Hunter the Reckoning. Two, that, yeah, it sounds like a 2002 game. <laughs> yes. Um, and then of course Italy. there's uh, Tennis World Tour Two. Tennis. <laughs> <laughs> and that's hope it. you hope, hope you like tennis. Uh, tennis games have not been exciting since Virtua Tennis on the Dreamcast. Since we tennis, since we sports tennis, true, true, and that's it. Yeah. Um. Oh, PlayStation's not looking too. Oh, PlayStation look. Uh, wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. PlayStation Now. This is PlayStation Now. Okay. Yes. Was, okay. So, of course, there's also PlayStation Now. There's their uh their Netflix style dealy, and they've got better games. They have, and these games are available today as well. Mm-hmm. You have, all right, now help me out here. Is it near Automata or near Automata? I always I've heard, heard both. Automata. That's what I thought. But then I started hearing Automata, and I'm and I'm starting to call into question my very existence. Automata. Yeah, okay. <laughs> near Automata. Near Automata, Automata, the captivating RP action RPG from Platinum Games. Uh, you have Ghost Runner, which I've heard is very good. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I I I played it at PAX and I was like, this is pretty good. And then I bought it and on uh-huh. Switch, and it, it was terrible. It runs really bad okay. on Switch, so maybe it'll be better on this. But um, maybe I also just really I I thought it was uh, at least the first level felt like it was designed poorly. But uh, okay, um, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe you'll like it. It's, it's if you got PlayStation now, you can give it a try now if you're interested. Yeah. Uh, and then Undertale, everybody's favorite meme game. <laughs> I so mean, uh, it's uh, it's not wrong, and it's can- not. You know, damn me with faint praise. It's what it is. Now, can you play these games on your um, PlayStation Five, or are they streaming? Because it's PlayStation Now. I believe that means it's streaming. So wherever you can access PlayStation Now, you can play these games. Oh, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure cause because I know, I know I know Game Pass. You can download it straight to the console. I got two games downloaded right now on my Xbox. I think these you can download straight to the console because they're PS4 games. Ooh. I think the only ones you can't. I think the only ones you can't download straight to the console are PS3 games. Those you have to stream. Hmm. Okay. Uh, can chat confirm? Cer- certain games featured on PlayStation now maybe a made available in the library on a limited time basis only games included in the subscription and their features are subject to change places now games may not provide the same features or be identical to the original formatted or other versions of the same title games uh low draco says you can download ps now games okay. ps3 is stream only apparently yes oh and now they're saying even some ps3 games you can uh, download interesting okay so that's good. You can, if you have yeah. PlayStation Now, you can straight up get Ghost Runner and Nero Automata and Undertale if you really want. Yeah. Um, Xbox. Xbox. All right. Uh, Games with Gold has been slacking because they yes. have a heavy focus with uh, Game Pass. Yes. Uh, this month, I feel like, is a little bit better with Games with Gold. That's only because I recognize three out of the four games. <laughs> um, so starting today through the entire month of August, you get Darksiders 3. Um from August 16th to September 15th, you get Ukulele. Um, I want to play for that. the Xbox for the Xbox 360, which is again playable on Xbox One and Series X. Um, August 1st to the 15th, you get Lost Planet 3, and August 16th to the 31st, you get Daru: Mark of the Wolves. Yeah, that game looks pretty. I don't know anything about it, but that is a pretty looking pixelated fighting game. 
uh, Mark of the Wolves. Yeah, look at that. That's some, some nice sprite work. Oh, yeah. Is that an SNK? It is, oh, there you go. It's an SNK game. That's That explains it. That is awesome. Uh, ukulele? Oh, that's pretty great. Yeah. Mark of, the, uh, Mark of the Wolves is the last entry in the Fatal Fury series. Select oh. over a dozen different fighters to participate in the King of Fighters Maximum Mayhem Tournament. Interesting. I, I did not know Fatal Fury was uh, was over. Me neither. That's I think weird. SNK just doesn't make fighting games. They only make King of Fighters uh, now, and they just put every character from all their fighting games in it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, there's some pretty good games here. Yeah. Uh, I know Darksiders is a big cult following. Uh, I don't get it because those games just look like amalgamations of other more popular games. Yes. Um, now let's see Game Pass, which has been crushing it. Uh, yes. Skate 3. Skate 3 and Skate 1. Wow. Skate 2 lost in, in the in the void yeah. somewhere. <laughs> uh, uh, also, Art Art of Rally. Uh, what's that? What's that other one, one next to Art of Rally? I can't yeah, even yeah. read the, uh, the, oh, the, the font. Dodgeball, Dodgeball Academia. That's what it says. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, Katamari Damacy Reroll. That's the remake of the PlayStation 2 classic. Mm -hmm. uh, Luminous Remastered. Hades. Oh, everyone, that's a big deal. Everyone's favorite uh, sexy game. Maybe, I'll, uh, maybe that's how I'll play it, through Game Pass. Yeah. Curse of the Dead Gods Dead Cells Update. Ooh, that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I think Dead uh, Cells was already on Game Pass, so. Yes. Uh, then Starmancer and Microsoft <gasps> Solitaire Collection. Let's go! There you go. Possibly yeah. the greatest PC game of all time because it was included with every PC. Uh, this is pretty good. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Nero Thomas is kind of a big deal. Uh, I don't know if yeah. this beats that, but uh, I mean, Hades is a pretty big deal. Hades is a big deal because um, that was like everybody's like big game last year. People couldn't stop talking about it. Uh, Skate one and three, I would say, are big deals. It's it's weird that they didn't put two in there. Um, if they did, it would probably be even a bigger deal to get the whole Skate trilogy on there. Although Skate's the type of game where like the most recent one like supersedes the other ones mm -hmm. in a way. So I guess they could have just put three, but if, if they're going to put one and three, they might as well throw two in there. Um, that is, that, that that's, it's a pretty good month. At least if you yeah. have, uh, the subscriptions so like PlayStation now and, and game pass. <laughs> yeah. If you just have uh PlayStation plus or Xbox live games gold, um, I mean, you have games. Ukulele is like, kind games. of a big deal, and uh, and, kind of and Hunter's deal. Arena. I'm kind of interested in. Yeah, there's uh, something for you, is what yes. we're trying to say. Yes, uh, not a bad month, I'll say. Yes. Also, I'll say uh, I've been I've been dabbling with some high frame rate games because I have a new monitor that I'm that I'm testing, um, mm -hmm. and I'm downloading Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Apparently, that is 120 frames per second. Really? I can't imagine what the hell that's going to look like, but uh, I'm Jeez. curious. Um, anyway, uh, we got some notifications here. We got and maybe it's Manny with two months. We got Sarge with 29 months, and we got CJ Gabriel with six months. Can confirm, just got an air fryer. It's life changing. Will there you go? There Holy you go. Shit. I never would have thought. I need a rice just cooker. So uh, we have a rice cooker. I tried using it once, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure I used it wrong. <laughs> okay. Because like I put, I thought I put the right amount of water and the right amount of rice in, but it just it it said it was supposed to take like 45 minutes. Two hours later, we still didn't have rice, <laughs> and by the time it was done, it was porridge. Oh, you put way too much. Uh water in it apparently yeah i put too much water in it but i followed the instructions to a t so interesting i don't know i i have to i either have to try again or just do what i've been doing by minute rice because that is just five minutes on the stove top stir the cover and then you're done um i ain't got time for this i have a kid 
and yeah I, I have the i just used the minute what rice i just put it in the microwave it takes mm. two seconds uh but it would be nice to get a giant bag of rice i have yeah. no room though i need like a really tiny uh uh rice cooker yeah i've seen recipes for making pancakes in a rice cooker and the pancakes come out like this big oh oh do you then would slice it down the middle like a like a loaf of bread <laughs> It makes, yeah, you do because it's not hollow inside. Oh. So. Um, Greater Journey says one cup of rice to one cup of water. Yes, that's what I do with the minute rice. The minute rice, I just put in. I don't even put any water. It just goes right in the really? microwave. Yeah. Oh, see, I I do the stove top because I, I like uh, the stove top better than microwave. You know, well, you know, what I do. I put it in the microwave for a minute and then I fry it on the on the stove top. <laughs> uh, okay, gotcha. And I'm gonna do that later. I am fucking hungry, guys. Uh, it's tier list time, boys. Yay! We're making a console tier list now. Somebody in the chat asked, "Are we gonna do home consoles or ha home and handheld consoles?" I'm gonna say, even though there's handhelds on here, we should do home consoles because then that gives us an extra podcast topic. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so we will do home consoles today. Yes. Uh, also, too, I I find it kind of unfair to judge home consoles and handheld consoles at the same time. Because there's just certain things a home console can do that a handheld could never do. Right. And vice versa, to an extent. You know? like So I feel like keep them separate for now. Of course, the Switch will be on both of them. Because right. the Switch is both of them. And the Switch will be um, S tier on the handheld one because it yes. can do more than what a traditional handheld could do. What the hell is this thing? Uh, what? You could see my screen, man. What the hell is this thing? Uh, that, I think, is a Turbo Express. It is a handheld Turbo Graphics 16. It's basically the Sega Nomad you for the Turbo Graphics 16 before the Sega Nomad. I have never heard of this thing before. Oh, Ooh, there's Bonk's Adventure. Yes. It, it literally took the TurboGrafx-16 Hue cards. You plug it in there, and you can play Turbo games on the go. Um, and it was it predates the Nomad. Uh, so. But that is a handheld. That will not be on this list. Tristan and Fail Mode said handheld should count. Uh, too bad. Make your own list. Yeah. <laughs> or wait until we do handhelds. Uh, yeah. Let's start with generation uh, order. Um, so I guess the first one, what do they have here? Do they have the Odyssey? Uh, we don't know much about these, no. old, these real old ones. They what don't have the Odyssey. Oh, no, they do. It's next to the Dreamcast. Next to the Dreamcast. Where is the Dreamcast? Yeah. Oh, uh, I see it. Third I row, yeah. This one? This is the Odyssey? That's the Odyssey. Okay, well, uh, that had like seven games, and they were that... all variations of Pong, so it's going in F tier. <laughs> uh, I would put it in in C tier just because it was the first. Fine. Honestly, and, it, and that's being charitable. Fine. Um... All right, what do we got next? Uh, uh, where, I think next would be the Atari uh, 2600, a.k.a. the Atari VCS. Um, all right, that's right here. Well, what do you think? I'm, I'm thinking it's going in C because it was the popular one at the time, but it still didn't have any good games on it. <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're right. I, th I think you're right. Uh, what the hell is this one? Uh, is that the Intellivision or is that it's either the Intellivision or the Magnavox Odyssey? I thought this was the Odyssey. Not, not the Odyssey. Intel ColecoVision. That was the other one. Well, they're both going in F tier because they're old and uh, and uh, they're uh, they're they don't have any good games. Well, the, the one the one with the silver streak is the fifty two hundred, the Atari fifty two hundred, and that does go in F tier because its controller never worked. <laughs> What is this one? Uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to pull up a list of uh, uh, Wikipedia console generations. 
Uh, let's see here. No, I don't want this. History of video game consoles? No, I want that list of generations. Did they get rid of the list of generations? Oh, no, here it is. Um, yeah, you're right. That was the Magnavox Odyssey. That that white one. Yep. Um, boop, boop. So what else do we have? Oh, the Atari uh, 5200. Uh, yeah, that goes in that goes in the bottom. Oh wait, no, there's wait that. What what what's there, the problem here? There's there's two, the Atari fifty two hundred. Yeah, there's two with a white strip. Oh, what? Wait, they I think they put the, the fifty two hundred. Yeah, they put the no, fifty two hundred on here twice. No, 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 no. One might be the seventy eight hundred. Seventy eight hundred. Yeah. That, you that thing. wait. It has the, a rainbow stripe in it. Oh yeah, this one's the fifty, uh, the the seventy eight hundred. Yeah. All right. Where do we put the Atari seventy eight hundred? Will. Uh, put I it with the twenty six hundred. Put it with the twenty six hundred because it's backwards compatible with the twenty six hundred, and it had better games. Like seventy seventy eight hundred games were better, but it was old technology that didn't get released until after the NES was already popular. Okay, so, uh, so I'll, put, I'm putting it above. I'm putting it an F, but above the other two. I would no. I would put it next to the 2600 okay. because it's basically just a better version of the 2600, but not better enough to get above C tier. So we're saying ColecoVision is top of F tier. Yeah, ColecoVision can be top of F tier. All right. Okay. All right. I understand. Um. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, have we reached NES Famicom era? Have we reached that, that yet? Isn't that the second generation? Or, uh, that that is the third. That's the third. NES is third. Okay. And Master System. Um, I think we have. I think All right, we have, we have achieved NES era. Okay. All right, where where is the NES? There it is. Now, controversial here. Will NES? I have fond memories of the NES. It is great. It is. It was uh, good for its time. Uh, my favorite game of all time is on the NES. However, it is one of the only good games on the NES. <laughs> the NES does not have many good games i i cannot agree with that i think that the nes has a lot of good games on it i think the problem is that the the super nintendo the genesis and the game boy advanced have all of those same games but better versions of those games also true but like you but, know when the nes uh switch online games came out the only good ones were the Mario ones. Yeah. Th th then you ha then you have things like Ninja Gaiden, which is great, but still not as good, or not even in the same ballpark. The Legend of Zelda is good, but not in the same ballpark as any other Zelda game. <laughs> I okay. I will not let you put the NES lower than B. Uh, I don't think I'm going to. Okay. I would give it an A. I would give it A tier, but I know that you have very strong negative feelings towards it. So I will not let you put it any lower than B. I, I, will th give I, you I that. might have been thinking of top C, but you know what? I'll give it B. I'll give I'll I'll put it B. And and when we start to fill this out a little more, we might want to go higher. Yeah. Or we can still move we're not locking these in. We're we're gonna be able to move them around. Yeah. Um Okay, so same generation, Master System. Master System. Now that uh, really didn't have a lot of good games. It just had no. the worst versions of Genesis games. Um, I know it had fan the Fantasy Star games, um, and though people like those. Um, Shinobi One is a it's a cult classic. Um, Alex Kid for people who are weird. Um, I'm thinking Top C. 
Yeah, top C, I would say. Also, too, about the Master System, most of the best games on Master System were also on Game Gear. Yeah. And I feel like more people played them on Game Gear. So you could put that in top C. I feel like we're going to put a lot of things in C. We'll, we'll, we'll move it around. We'll, we'll move it around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else was in that generation? Um, uh, oh, the 7800 the, we, we uh, dealt yeah. with and the mm-hmm. Atari XEGS, which is not on this list at all, which yeah. is probably so, for the best. Yeah. All right. Moving so now on. now we're in the fourth gen, 16-bit era, baby. The fun gen. This is yeah. this is where where this is our heyday, guys. Yeah. This is this is where this is where we are masters of this generation. Yes. This was the original console war where people bled, not this <laughs> pansy stuff we have today. Uh let's do our 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 old stomping ground, Sega Genesis. Yeah. Let's just go for it. All right. Um hmm. Now, I uh, Sega Genesis got a got a got a it's really dear to me. It's got a got a yeah. place in my heart. It's got um, a fantastic library of games. It has a lot of good games. I don't think the amount of good games is uh is very good. <laughs> I don't think there's there's I don't think there's there are a lot of good games, but compared to basically everything else we're gonna talk about from here on, um there there doesn't have that many good games. Like compared I don't know. to Super I, Nintendo, Super Nintendo had a lot of good games. Super Nintendo had a lot of good games. Super Nintendo also had a lot of really shitty games, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I I would argue that the 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 Genesis and the Super Nintendo were for the most part even. Like when you actually like break it down, yes people nowadays will reflect more fondly on the super nintendo because of games like super metroid and uh mario world and ocarina not ocarina time links to the past and the final fantasy games and chrono trigger and you know probably something else i'm missing but the genesis always had something compatible you know it had it had of course the sonic games comparable it had of course yeah comparable it had, of course, the Sonic games. It had um, their own, you know, action RPG games with uh, Beyond Oasis, Fantasy Star Four, uh, Legend of Senti. Um, it had uh, sports games, which were best on Genesis. It had uh, Aladdin, which was best on Genesis. It had Mortal Kombat, which was best on Genesis because of a the blood and b a better combo system than was on the Super Nintendo. So no matter, like, whatever people want to throw at, you know, Genesis first, SNES, I really do feel like they both, like, one strength, like, their strengths and their weaknesses, like, basically cancel each other out. I think... That's that's where I stand. I think the Super Nintendo had more high-tier polished stuff, like Zelda, like, even Street Fighter, like, um... Yeah. Uh, uh, all the Mario's Mega Man X. You you don't got nothing like that on on Genesis. Well, yeah, I would say Gunstar Heroes. There's only one of them, but I mean it's very sim- It's very similar, like a tough as nails <laughs> shooter. I think Gunstar Heroes is a good example of uh, uh, like the best of Sega Genesis. Like it still doesn't hold a candle to <laughs> all of the stuff that's best of Super Nintendo. Like it's still really good, but it's not the Super yeah. Nintendo had some stuff that just absolutely blew it out of the water and and, and in ter- at least in terms of uh uh how well they've held up and 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 how uh and how f- and how fun they are to play. Uh, right. At the time, we loved our Sega Genesis, and we'd go over other yes. people's houses and play the Super Nintendo. And we're like, I got my stuff's fine at home. Yeah, I don't need all yeah. that stuff. Uh, so it really, at the time, it wasn't really blowing me out of the water. But after going back and playing through a lot of Super Nintendo stuff that I missed, uh, I gotta say, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo has uh, 
more things that I think impacted the gaming industry uh, uh, more and, and, are, and are more fun to play uh, even now. That being said, I think they're both pretty neck and neck anyway. <laughs> yeah. So um, I would say whatever tier you put them in, I think they both go in the same tier. If you want to put Super Nintendo ahead of Genesis, fine. But I think they're same tier, whatever tier you put them in. I'm going to put them in A. Yeah. Because I think this generation is one of the best generations in gaming. But uh, I Absolutely. don't know. I mean, they might move because we, we got a lot more to talk about. And I feel we like do, yes. we don't want to we don't want to get too many clumped into one tier. Mm -hmm. um, there's more in that generation, though. Um, yeah, because like this generation and the next generation, they were like other people would try to come in and do like weird stuff. Mm hmm. You know, like uh, the Neo Geo. Oh, yes. Oh, of course. Uh, so the Neo Geo, that whole gimmick was that it was uh, arcade quality stuff at home, yes. which was a big deal yes. because we would have stuff at home like Mortal Kombat. And then we go to the arcade and be like, oh, but this is different. This is different yeah. than what we have at home. Yeah. Uh, there would always be a downgrade from the arcade to the home console. And the Neo Geo, uh, because it was actual arcade hardware, um, gave you the same exact experience as you would get in the arcade. The problem is that meant the console and the games were super expensive and nobody owned it at the time because of that. I don't see it. It's got to be uh, here, though. Uh, no, I don't think. I guess, oh, maybe they didn't put it. Interesting. All right, well, the end yeah. gauge right. will be the, the, the Neo Geo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um. Uh, for where are we putting the end gauge? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, if the Neo Geo is not here, we can skip it. We don't have to put it on the list. But I would say, I would say the Neo Geo goes in C tier because the games that were on it were good. Mm -hmm. Like they they weren't necessarily bad games, but the the hubris of it being so expensive <laughs> prohibited it from really getting to anybody okay so where in c tier would you put it uh probably behind the master system okay i think that's because at least people could afford the master system i'm not gonna put the end gauge there because then everybody's gonna just ask why the end gauge is there yeah. um um uh, turbo graphics 16 i guess is the other one from this gen that is actually here though yeah, that, uh, that's in the. It's it, yeah, right there. Wait, is it this gen? Yeah. So Turbo Gra P PC Engine Turbo Graphics sixteen. Where are you? I'm uh, I'm on the wiki. Oh yeah, it's the first thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That is this one. Uh. Yeah. What, what did that have? Bonk's Adventure. <laughs> Bonk's Adventure, Splatterhouse, uh, a lot of shoot 'em ups. Uh, Castlevania Rondo of Blood, the original version. Um, yeah, not a lot. <laughs> I'm putting I that. Would... I think I'm putting that maybe behind the Magnavox Odyssey. I don't. Uh, I see. I don't know because the games weren't. That that's another situation where they you know the games weren't necessarily bad. It's just it had very bad market share and a very bad visibility. Because you had you had Godzilla and King Kong fighting each other, and then you had freaking Son of Godzilla standing in the background going, "Hey, yeah," but but the library just wasn't there, and be, probably because of that, probably because there was nobody wanted to develop for that. Everybody wanted to develop True. for the big dogs. True. Um. Anyway. Yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna be mad at us for putting it in C tier. Right. Um, all right. What else do we have here? Where I are we on? Uh, we're on the 32x generation. Will oh, I N64. Oh boy, this is the N64 generation. Yes. Um, where is that man? I right, well, we'll start with the big guy N64. Yes. Oh God. Oh, okay. So oh, so okay. so. Listen. Uh, this is a huge step for gaming. It was, it was, there was a lot of horrible growing pains, but there's also a lot of great games here. As far yeah. as how well they've aged, 
It's questionable. Um, but I think the fact that it was so important, I don't think it can go lower than B. Okay, I, I will give you that. <laughs> I, I will say the technical problems, though. I mean, it, again, it was the first, like, Nintendo's first fully 3D console. I think they absolutely crushed it with Super Mario 64. It was the first, yes. uh, that was the first, like, good 3D platformer. Uh, the transition from 2D to 3D there was was immaculate. Um, yeah. Except for the camera, so maybe not so immaculate. Um, but But I feel like... Nintendo handled that transition better than most, if not all, other video right. game companies. I agree. So, I feel like B tier is good because, much like the NES, it paved the way for everything. But the technology has advanced so far. Even like the generation succeeding the N sixty four is such a better generation. Mm -hmm. You know. Like, spoiler alert, I will say the GameCube goes above the N64, but I feel like anything lower than B for the Nintendo 64 is not, it, it's wrong. <laughs> so I think N64 and B tier uh, is, is the right spot for it. There are a lot of technical problems, like, like a lot of, ga most games couldn't even hit 30 frames a second. Um, right. Uh, but I mean, the, the, the games were good regardless. Uh, yes, at, at, especially I mean, at the time. At the time, everything was awesome. We were having a great time yeah. with the N sixty four. But now, trying to play an N sixty four game, you're gonna have a rough go. Unless you already have nostalgia for it. Mm -hmm. Um. Otherwise, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be hard. I put it top of B over the NES. Sorry, Will. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's honestly that's that's fine. Uh, I think next we gotta do 32x or Sega Saturn. Um, is it, uh, 32x I don't think is on there because that's that's an add-on that doesn't count. What's left of the Game Gear? What is that? Was uh, that the Turbo Graphics? No, yeah. that's a. Uh, is that a? Oh, left of the Game Gear. Yeah. No, I don't know what the hell that is. Looks like a Neo Geo situation. Oh, 3DO. Somebody says in the chat. Is it a 3DO or is it a... That might be a Neo Geo CD. It looks like Neo Geo. Because there was a Neo Geo CD, which is basically the same thing, but it ran on disc. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever I said the Neo Geo was, the same thing with the Neo Geo CD. Just put it in the same spot. So like, I guess C tier behind the Master System. <laughs> I'm just... Yeah, yeah, it's the Neo Geo CD. Okay. Uh, so. So yeah, I'm putting it right next to the, the other. Yeah. The other Neo Geo. The Turbo, the Turbo Graphics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so the Sega Saturn. C tier. C? Did you say? C tier. Yes. Sega Saturn was not a great system. No. <laughs> Sega Saturn was a 2d system that they panicked and tried to shove a 3d chip in i i think the biggest flaw was they had no killer sonic game if they had a killer had, sonic game then it would have it would have it would have been successful they had no a no killer sonic game also it they was dropped rushed. the ball with all of the crazy add-ons that the genesis had yes also this was rushed to market mm. they the that the very first E3 in 95 Sega you know it was supposed to come out in like November of that year but Sega went on stage at E3 and they said it is shipping to retailers now and it will be like uh 3.99 launch price and Walmart de declined to carry it because they didn't know this was happening <laughs> so they so that's the biggest retailer in America not carrying the system and then at the Sony conference, they came out and they said, oh, yeah, when well, the PlayStation will launch for $2.99, and that was it. And that, that killed it. There, there In addition was, to all, like, the fact that it was shitty to develop for. There was one game I wanted to try for Sega Saturn, and yeah. I don't remember the name of it. It was some game, some Japanese game where, like, you walked around and you shot rockets. Kind of looked like the guy from, uh, from, uh, 
uh, Power Stone, like the main character from Power Stone, but it's the oh, whole game. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah, know what the name know. of the game is, but uh, it looks freaking awesome. Oh, Burning Rangers. That's it. Oh, oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. I want to try Burning Rangers. That's literally yeah. the only game I'm interested in. That's uh, a Sega Saturn game. Oh, yeah. my God. It looks beautiful. Um, Otherwise, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a bad console. I'm putting it behind Odyssey. Yeah. We might even want to put yeah. it in D, honestly. I, I was just, honestly, I was just thinking that. Uh, I was we were, just thinking put it in D. Fuck you, Sega Saturn. Should have had a it's better Sonic bad because, game. Like, because, like, you know, we didn't have a Saturn. We have, like, no real experience with it other than, like, playing a game or two here and there. But, like... There's a reason for that. There's no real redeeming qualities to the Saturn. Right. <laughs> aside from the controller. Right. Um... What else is that generation here? Uh, the what? PlayStation One. Oh yeah, can't. Well, how can we forget about that? Yeah. Uh, so that has a great library with great games. Uh, it, it, Does it though? <laughs> Does it? Here's the thing. Hey, no, listen. Okay. Here's okay. the thing. Yes. I've said this before. I. I PlayStation One nostalgia is weird to me because people act like it's a thing, but I don't think it is. <laughs> because every time, because you look at things like PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale or the the PlayStation Mini or, or things like that, like people are excited for it, but when it actually happens, nobody gives a shit. Because I don't think PlayStation nostalgia is as strong as sony would like you to believe it is oh definitely not i i i think the uh the ips that nintendo had had a better uh uh grasp on our nostalgia and had a longer right. effect on us than any of the playstation games did whatever playstation ip like people like really remember hmm. first of all they're all third party like even crash bandicoot and spyro those are third party but you look at tomb raider metal gear solid tony hawk resident evil uh final fantasy that's things true. like that Th yeah it, you know it wasn't so much sony's games as much as it was everybody else's games also whatever technical problems you were saying with the n64 those all apply to the playstation possibly even more so because it was a weaker console and it didn't have analog controls for a long time. Most of those games you still played with a D pad. I would argue that it almost didn't have analog at all. Like, like uh, yeah. almost no games use the analog uh, sticks. Um, yeah. So like they had to re-release resident evil Two special dual shock edition just to have analog control. I think that they handled the technical hurdles a little better, though. I, I th there are games that run at uh, I I would say there's more games that run at stable frame rates, um, and it was disc based, so things were a little faster and uh, games yeah. were a little bigger because they could just give you a billion discs. Um, yeah, but um. It, it, Graphics were a little nicer on uh, on N64, even if the frame rates yeah. were were worse. Um, uh, somebody in the chat said weaker. LOL. It was 32 bit. What do you want? Yeah, <laughs> of course yeah. it was weaker. Um, I that being said, I think there were some great games on here that that had a really that that hold up and 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 uh, it did have an impact. But uh, I think that uh, N64 had a bigger impact. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna put I, it right behind N64. Okay, I think I can live with that. Would you want to put it lower? I don't think it deserves. To be I, I would put. I would put it. I would honestly put it lower than NES. But that's just me. Um, you really think the library was that bad, huh? <laughs> the I is, think like, the library is better than the NES library. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out and the, say that. The thing, I'm. I'm just thinking of like that generation specifically. The the N64 had like 300 games released in North America, and then the the PlayStation One had like 2,000 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Most people, like you look at the ratio, there were more I think good games on the N64 than there were on the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of like you know, the overall library. I might agree. But, I mean, I, I can't deny, you know, the impact that it had on the industry, the fact that it was, you know, the first 
major shakeup in the games industry in a long time. Um, so I guess putting it in B tier behind the N64 does make sense. Okay. Then 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 it's going there. Yeah. Um I was considering putting it behind the NES, but uh I think no, I think it's better than the NES. Um yeah. anything else from that generation that we have here? Uh oh what the is Jaguar. This? Is that what this is? The red one? The 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 black and red one? Black and red one. Uh next to the Wii? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Jaguar. Uh that was trash, right? F tier. One hundred percent F tier. Not a good system. Um, stupid controller. Um, <laughs> I think everybody says the best games on the Jaguar were Tempest 2000 and Alien vs. Predator. That was it. Nothing else. I remember seeing it in stores and stuff around the time of the N64 and the PlayStation and being like, what the hell is this? And looking at the games and being like, why would anybody want this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is bottom of F tier, by the way. I put that all the way yeah. down. Um, yeah. Not even. Not, I feel like there's like not a single redeeming quality about <laughs> Atari yeah, Jaguar. Wow. Um, okay, uh, I think that's it for that generation. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't see the 3DO or anything else. Okay. Uh, All right. Next up, we are in the PlayStation 2, GameCube, uh, Dreamcast, and Xbox generation. We got a lot of good stuff here. Oh yeah. We're gonna be we're gonna yes. be at the tippity top here. Okay. Uh, so I guess we start with the Dreamcast because that's also part of this generation. Okay. Dreamcast is uh, Will's favorite console of all time, correct? <laughs> Incorrect. I just think that the Dreamcast does not have bad games. Every game on the oh, Dreamcast is good. Oh, that's the good. thing. That's the thing. That's, okay. the, that's what it is. So it must it's be when, it's when they, <laughs> It's when you port the games to other consoles. That's when apparently they become bad games. Um, Dreamcast has a lot uh, of good shit. Dreamcast, Dreamcast is, is great. a lot. Yes. Dreamcast... I think Dreamcast is A tier. <laughs> I think Dreamcast, I think people don't give Dreamcast enough credit. We didn't even grow no. up with a Dreamcast. We really no. wanted a Dreamcast. And we got it yeah, way we... later, but we played the fuck out of the Dreamcast we got yeah. way later. It had like even like like when I say all games on Dreamcast were good, even like the weird and like bizarre ones had something interesting about them that made you just want to like keep playing keep seeing what was happening because that was at the point where sega like once they canceled the dreamcast sega was like you know what let's just do the weirdest fucking shit <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you got games like seaman and all those like weird arcade ports that you know don't make any sense but like worked I, I i think the only thing that ruined the dreamcast was the uh the piracy that they had uh no anti-piracy measures <laughs> so uh yeah, yeah people that, pirated that the fuck problem. out of it yeah. and uh then sega gave up the console war yeah um also the fact that the the playstation 2 was coming the next year and people were waiting for that mm -hmm. you know because it was an upgrade from their playstation 1 and that also had a dvd player in it so you kill two birds with one stone right there on screen, I have the uh, 3D Smash Brothers. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is Power Stone 2, Power which is Stone. one of the best games on the Dreamcast that yes. uh, uh, I think uh, everybody should play at least once That's in their life. Like, like the Capcom fighting games on that system, because it's it's like Power Stone 1 and 2, Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. You know, th that was like the best system to play fighting games on, especially Capcom fighting games. Mm -hmm. Did you know? Did did you know that Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast is one of the few games that got 10 out of 10 from every major review website at the time? And the not. only other game, the only other game, because they didn't just hand out 10s back in the 90s. Only two games like in the 90s got 10 out of 10 from like all the major publications ocarina of time i do it and soul caliber <laughs> um also i'll go out on a limb and say that sonic adventure 2 was a great game <laughs> um 
it quickly became dated but uh when all yes. the other stuff came out with this generation but uh that was uh that was uh worthy of getting a dreamcast for i would say yeah um so it, it was short-lived the dreamcast uh yes. it, it was quickly abandoned so the library isn't that big but it has a lot of good stuff in, in that small library yes. um i'm throwing it in a tier baby yeah buddy there you go it's going at the end of a tier though <laughs> that's that's fine well let me grab it what happened I, I think i broke the site oh no do i have to copy no. all this over again <laughs> Let's see what... Oh, yeah, I got to copy the whole thing again. Oh, nuts. Um, well, anyway, what do you want to do next? you want to do PS2? Sure. <laughs> uh, PS2 is... Do you, want it, do, you want, do you want me to... Do you want me to give a controversial opinion? Yeah, I was going to say it's one of the best consoles of all time. S tier. S tier. You think you think S-tier. that's controversial? Yes. I don't think that's controversial it, dude, it, at it's, all. It's, it's video games. I think I everything's controversial, but I think the PlayStation 2 cuz now we're starting to get to like video games being a little bit more than toys and like, you know, pastimes and whatnot. And now we're starting to get into like serious entertainment systems, serious media devices serious experience Ooh, givers for it lack of saved, a better term it saved my shit oh nice um so the playstation 2 god I, I know i talked about like the playstation 1 had a huge library but like only a handful of them were good the playstation 2 also had a huge library but so many more good games for it mm-hmm. like this was a system that like First off, everybody had a PS2. It is still the best-selling console of all time, I think. Um, everybody developed for the PS2. It had so many great franchises debuted in this generation. So many great franchises got better in this generation. So many unique ideas got to flourish in this generation. And they all started on the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2 was the basis for not not just the generation but all video games going forward. And it has it, I I I can't I can't stress this enough. The library is what the kids call unfuckwithable. <laughs> because Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3, Tony Hawk 3 and Tony Hawk Underground. Um fucking Final Fantasy 10 if you're into that sort of thing. Uh the Time Splitter series. Uh, print the Prince of Persia series, uh, Grand Theft, Grand Theft Auto Three, Vice City, and uh, San Andreas. Of uh, what else? Silent Hill Two, Silent Hill Three. Of uh, it's just it's the more you dig into this library, there really is something for everybody. And yeah, look, these games are dated as well. These games you know, are hard to go back to and play. No, I mean, not, I mean, yes, but yes, as, but not, not all of them. Badly, not all of them and not as badly as N64 and PS1 games. Right. I think th- like this is the clear line to where gaming is now. And honestly, like most video game systems today still can't match what the PS2 offered back in 2002. Like, it really, it really was, like, the first, like, all these, like, you know, your B tier and your A tier systems, those are great systems. This was great to another level. I I think one of the best things about this generation was, is that um, they were still trying to figure things out. So they weren't afraid to be wacky and and try all different types of new things. Like, right now, uh, if you want to make a game, what genre is that game? Is it a first person shooter? Is it is it a third person shooter? Is it a is it, it a is third a... person platformer? Is it a racing game? And if it's one of those, it has to conform to all of the like control uh uh standards and and, and everything yeah. from all of the previous games in that genre. Um whereas in this generation, uh they had 3D uh they were they were more comfortable with 3D. They kind of had it figured out. 
um, and they were still willing to try all different types of things in all different types of genres. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, I think the library of PlayStation 2 is great, yes. and I think it definitely deserves to be S tier. Yes. Um, so I want to read some notifications here. We got Iz Izubus with three months. Thank you very much. And we got Khalil Jama with 10 months. How is PlayStation 1 behind 64? It legit made disc-based format the standard and made big companies possible due to it being able to hold more data. Yeah, but the N64 made literally 3D work. <laughs> I, I don't think the PlayStation made CD standard necessarily. Companies have been trying to make CD standard for console games for a long time. There's a TurboGrafx CD, which was a CD add-on for the TurboGrafx. There was the Sega CD. There was the Saturn. There was the, the 3DO and the Philips CDI and all those other weird shitty ones. The... the the PlayStation was going to be CD regardless. I think this the the PlayStation was just the first one to have the games that people actually wanted to play and had the marketing muscle to tell people about these games rather than, you know, just being weird add-ons or weird also ran systems that couldn't compete with Nintendo and Sega. I, I think the N64 got a lot of shit at the time for being a, a cartridge still. Well, yes. everything else was oh, yeah. see because CD was a cool new technology that everybody was trying to utilize. Also, it was yeah. uh, it wasn't proprietary, so it was easier yeah. to develop for and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think that uh, going like I don't think paving the way for disc base is really uh, 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 commendable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just think that's just the way th things were going, and I think the N sixty. I mean. It was hurt a little bit by not being disc based because uh, they could have held a lot more information for, especially for third I mean, party games. Uh, yeah, so that's why Final Fantasy VII was supposed to be on the N sixty four, but they right. couldn't fit it on the disc, so they moved to the PlayStation. I feel like uh, PlayStation had a lot. Uh, the people were third parties were more willing to develop for that. Um, yeah. But Nintendo still had all the great stuff, so uh, they really weren't uh, the, the, too hurt by it. And now, yeah, Nintendo's back to doing. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh you know Our part uh, uh, yeah yes yeah. uh, and and i mean we're going to solid state now everything's gonna be yeah. download whatever uh anyway um what do you want to do gamecube now sure gamecube it's right up there with the playstation 2 it really is so i think on a pure technical level the, N6, the, the GameCube is a better system than the PS2 because from a design standpoint, from a graphical standpoint. It's another situation where, it like, like the N64 PS1 situation, where the games on the Nintendo system, it had less games, but it had more better games, like your Sunshine, Metroid Prime, um... Resident Evil 4, the best version is still the GameCube version. Um, Eternal Darkness, uh, games like that. However, like the li the library just isn't there this time. The the qual the quality over quantity does not work this this time around for me. So I would put the GameCube in the a tier but like the top of the a tier you don't think the library is there i think the i don't compared to the ps2 library it's it's it just doesn't it just doesn't compare for me this time around i i think I, look you know, the game the, the gamecube's got great games don't get me wrong a lot of gamecube games are better than a lot of ps2 games but just the sheer scope of the PS2 library just crushes the GameCube library, you know, night and day. I, 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 uh, most of the time when Nintendo has the smaller library, they make up for it with the, uh, the A tier games that they have and, and that Nintendo yeah. polish and, and how good their own developed games are because, uh, they don't really need that third party support because they already have a lot of great developers that work right under them um, and their own great IPs. And I think the GameCube has all of that, 
but PlayStation really knocked it out of the part with with the with the third party support on the PlayStation Two. So yeah. it, it might have. Uh, I still think the GameCube is right there with the PlayStation 2, but definitely behind it. Because, I mean, you got yeah. friggin' Smash Bros. Melee. Even though Super Smash Mario Sunshine Melee. is probably one of the weakest 3D Mario games, it's still a mm-hmm. great game. Um, Rogue Squadron. Rogue's, Rogue uh, Squadron, yeah. Th- th- those games. Um, Rogue Leader. Um, but I'll agree with you. I'll put it at the top of eight tier. Yeah. Um. Because I'm thinking, like, S-tier needs to be, like, you want to make S-tier special. It's got to be, right. like, an elite few consoles there. You're right. I I mean, maybe GameCube can go in S-tier, but, like, I feel like I want to get this list done before we start considering GameCube for S-tier. Okay. Uh, Xbox. Now, Xbox... Uh... It's got some good games, but the library is not, is not anywhere it's, near uh, uh, PlayStation or GameCube. No, no. Um, Xbox, I think, is very much B tier. Um, it's got good games. It's it's standardized. Uh, who was it talking about? You know, PlayStation standardized disc based games, even though it didn't. Um, <laughs> you can make that argument that Xbox did that for online play, uh, even though it didn't. Because Xbox included a broadband adapter, standard, mm-hmm. and you know, pretty much, you know, paved the way for how online play for consoles would be going forward uh, uh, with, especially with Xbox Live. Yeah, I think Halo did did that. Uh, I think Halo also standardized first person shooters. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it 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 paved the way for those. Um, so I think the Xbox is very important. Uh, but also the PlayStation Two, it didn't have. Uh, you had to get a network adapter but um still what was that game uh what was that all, all the the military game everybody played uh you had a headset oh, uh, you could talk so to calm. So calm. So calm. that was uh that was another one that standardized uh online play yeah uh but xbox had xbox live i will yeah. put uh xbox at the top of b tier above n64 i think okay <laughs> or it should be behind n64 mm. and, and and above playstation one I don't I think know. N64 I, might, I, be, might be more important than the, and better with better games than the, than the Xbox. Because yeah. Xbox really all it's got is Halo. Yeah. And a lot of like the, the good Xbox games are also on PS2. Yeah, I'm putting it behind, uh, behind NES. Yeah. Now, does it go behind PlayStation 1, though? Ooh. You know what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. You know, I'm putting it behind NES. Fuck it. It's at the bottom of B tier. <laughs> Fuck it. All right. All right. Talks Bobble. Thank you for the 22 months. Um, I think that's it for that generation. Yes. Now we were on to the seventh generation. This is the Wii, PS3, and the Xbox 360. Um, all right. Uh, would we like to do the Wii? Sure. Now, the Wii sold a butt ton. Uh, I think one of the biggest problems was uh, that it had just too much shit. <laughs> they called it show. Uh, they, they, people were just developers were just making anything for the Wii because yes. everybody had a Wii, and it was yes. easy to to sell. Uh, uh, it was easy to sell regular people garbage at the time. Yeah, so uh, it had a lot of crap, but it had a lot of good stuff too. Part of the it problem lot, was that, a lot of great stuff. Yeah, part of the problem was that uh, it had a weird control input. It used motion controls, and sometimes that was cool, like with Wii Sports and whatever. But and for Nintendo's own games, but other developers had a hard t- like third parties had a hard time developing for it. It got the worst versions of other games. Um, yep because the control input was weird for developers and it was way less powerful than all of the other uh, consoles at the time. Yeah. So I think the Wii is great. I think it it's either bottom of B, top of C. I would say bottom of B. Okay. Yeah, because I don't... Even a lot of the first party games, it, it's still, of all of those that, that, IPs, the thing, they're like... still not that good. That's the thing. Like a lot of those, 
on the surface there's something wrong with the Wii, but in hindsight the motion controls really did cripple that system. Mm-hmm. Because nothing nothing plays like that anymore. If it came and with the be... classic controller, maybe that would have been better. Yeah. So like if if you were to try to play these games now having never played a Wii game before, I don't know if it would be easy to understand. Mm-hmm. So, I, I think uh uh uh, Super Mario Galaxy, great, great example. Mario of Galaxy, a great yes. Wii game. Uh, Skyward um, Sword, but Skyward Sword, we're learning now is there's there's a reason why uh, uh, that game might not be the best Zelda game because uh, yeah. they had to do a lot to make it work well on a current system with standardized modern controls. Yeah, and that's what I forgot. Somebody like a developer who worked on. Metroid Prime once said he doesn't know if uh, an HD collection could work because Metroid Prime 3 was a Wii game and they used a lot of motion controls in that game. And mm-hmm. he's right. Metroid Prime 3 is a very good game. It's a very, very good game. But I don't know how you can translate that to a modern system. You know? So, yeah, I think I think bottom of B, top of C. Also, the Wii kicked off a really bad era for like people trying to you know, get the casual market and shoehorn in motion controls um, to everything. We had the Kinect, we had the PlayStation Move controllers. Um, so yeah, the in hindsight, the Wii probably did more harm than good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think it did a lot of good. I think, uh, yeah, it, like you know, it it, it it brought gaming to to a much wider audience. Um, yes, it had it had you know health and fitness like like uh applications like you know with mm-hmm. we fit and uh and we sport everybody fucking played we sports um yeah but otherwise in terms of uh uh the whole gaming space i think uh it's got it it, 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 it was it was uh it was a weird time for nintendo yeah um which is weird because it sold way more than the gamecube and the gamecube we put yes. higher <laughs> yes um it's like we still have a lot of people saying that the playstation one is better than the n64 i don't know i don't know what you're all smoking just because it's just because it has less games playstation one has more shitty games <laughs> yes <laughs> um what's next we got uh let's do playstation 3 okay hmm I think that no, you know what? Forget that. Let's do Xbox 360 because I feel like we're gonna base PlayStation 3 off of what we do with Xbox 360. You know, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Xbox 360 is—I don't know if it is my favorite console of all time. It used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's uh, definitely up there because the library is great. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I probably have more games for the Switch right now than anything else, but. Besides that, I think we have the most games for Xbox 360. Yeah, um, that was a time in our lives where we we just had expendable income. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we had our own money and we just yeah. went fucking nuts. We had uh, a lot of Xbox 360s. At yeah, we went through them like crazy. Um, yeah. Part of the problem, I, also, me and Will always shared everything that we every game console and every game that we ever had. Uh, yeah. but the Xbox 360, we had two at one point just because I wanted one in my room, uh, yeah. because I wanted to be a degenerate and play Call of Duty all night. <laughs> um, but, uh, it was, it was, uh, as, as, uh, as, uh, Trevor points out, machine was defective. It was defective. Yeah. It, it did. It, yes. it was, it had a critical flaw with the original version. That is like the big thing keeping this out of S tier for me mm-hmm. is the fact that the Red Ring of Death was so prevalent and so widespread. It like it killed everybody I knew. Like their system died. Like I, th- you, I th- couldn't stop it. I think it's over ninety percent now of Xbox three sixties yeah. have yeah. have failed, which is and uh, what was a weird problem. was like. So aside from the one you got for yourself. We had three Xbox 360s. We had the one that red ringed. Mm-hmm. We had another one where the disk drive died. Interesting. Which was really weird. Like, I nobody I knew had, had that problem. And then we got the Star Wars one, which, you know, knock on wood, still works fine. Probably the best special edition system ever made. Yes. Um, 
but yeah, that that red ring is keeping it out of S tier for me because other than that, again, an unfuckwithable library of games. <laughs> Probably Microsoft's best first party lineup in history. Like the third party support for it was unmatched. Uh, Xbox Live had matured to the point of perfection honestly yeah volero in the chat says 3d 360 re redefined console multiplayer so i, I would say yeah. yes that this this uh oh god oh, i opened the tab what okay oh wait did i open a tab or oh no please still be there okay we're good um i think that yeah the uh i, I think the online situation on xbox 360 was a really huge deal for console gaming yeah uh and like playstation yeah. 3 had online but it wasn't it wasn't like it wasn't anywhere Xbox. near as robust and well formed mm -hmm. as the Xbox 360. Um so I think that on like I I I think the Xbox 360 is a better console than the PlayStation 3, but I think that the Xbox 360 needs points taken off for the Red Ring of Death. Yeah. Uh so what do we think? Bottom of A? I would say the middle of A. Uh, in front of or behind the 16-bit consoles? <laughs> in front of, you know, in front of Dreamcast, in front of Dreamcast. How about that? Yeah, in front of, yeah, I would say between the Dreamcast and the Genesis. All right. Because it's, it's so close to perfect. Mm. If it didn't have all the technical issues. Yeah, the, the, the technical issues really, really sullied that. It would be, it would be S tier if it wasn't for that. Um. Yeah. But next we have PlayStation 3, which I think had really good games, uh, and it got a lot of the runoff uh, for, from third-party stuff, because uh, they yeah. at this time, uh, third parties had a pretty decent time developing for both 360 and PlayStation 3 and having a pretty much similar experience. Um, well, the PS3 was harder to develop for at the time, because they were using Blu-ray discs, and they were also had a proprietary... Uh, system architecture based on i think it was called the emotion engine i think they were both proprietary uh, well no uh X xbox used the power pc chip ah. which is what max used at the time mm -hmm. so like people had familiarity with power pc chips rather than a custom-made emotion engine um so the, the playstation 3 got better as things as time went on yes Ironically, once they took out backwards compatibility for PS2 games and you know, they and the slim version of the PS3 came out, that's when it started to become like a worthy competitor cuz then you got games like Uncharted and, and uh God of War 3 and you know, eventually The Last of Us. Um they they started to like find their footing again and really like return to what made you know the the PlayStation name, great, but it, it took a long time to get there, and you know there's a lot of other wrong things with the system. Like we said, the online isn't as good as the Xbox 360 was. Um, the controller was dated by that point. Like people were getting sick of the the Dual Shock 3 controller. It didn't even launch with Rumble in it. They tried to pass the beginning of the PlayStation 3 was like so weird because it was Sony basically trying to sell you on their system and like trying to trying to say like all of their flaws are features <laughs> so, i mean i mean they also asked for six hundred dollars out of the out of the gate which is yeah. still even with even without inflation of insane of them because yeah. right, right now people yeah. are even like five hundred dollars for a playstation that's crazy yeah. but they wanted six hundred in two thousand and what uh 2007? Six. Six? Six. 2006. Six. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think early PlayStation 3 is is trash. But uh, they only on this tier list, they only have the, the later model PlayStation 3, which I think is, yeah. is the one that we should be judging it on. And it's people, fair, yeah. And it didn't have the same game breaking flaws that an xbox 360 had but it did have the yellow light of death which right. wasn't as it wasn't as uh a uh, widespread but it was still like w more than 
any consoles these days fail yes yes like the playstation 3 failed way more than the playstation 4 and 5 um yeah. and even 2 so uh it gets more credit because it was more uh the, the the problems weren't as widespread but it still had problems um so uh i don't think the playstation 3 is as good as the 360 but i think the 360 gets gets points taken off because of that uh yeah do you think that the playstation 3 is still lower than the 360 on this list because we're kind of trashing on it a lot more than i was expecting yeah. to because <laughs> um, it did have a lot of the same games i feel like eventually the playstation 3 caught up with the 360 uh, also so i would important to note it was a blu-ray player it was yes. the yes. like least expensive blu-ray player yes um I would say maybe put the PS3 at the top of B tier because eventually really? it did eventually it did meet up with the 360 but it still had a lot more like design problems I would say That's true if uh, if we're comparing it to if we're, if we're taking an average between the early PlayStation 3 and the late PlayStation 3 it's still going to be you know somewhere yeah. in the middle So uh yeah I'll put it at the top of B Oh, speaking of early versus late, an Xbox, the second model Xbox 360 is on this list. Oh. It's next to the, the Game Gear. I feel like we should. I, we, if we only have one PlayStation 3, we shouldn't do both Xbox 360s. Yeah. Um, so do you want to you replace the Xbox 360 there with the, the slim model? <laughs> no, I don't. Because we talked okay. a lot about how, how it was flawed. Uh, and you know what it took them a while to fix it yes um at least the playstation 3 they were like very quick to take the the playstation 2 out of it yeah um uh anyway someone is cooking something really good in this apartment (laughs) building right now i am fucking starving um all right what's next is that the whole generation (laughs) Yes. All right, we did all of that generation. This is taking a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, but we only have two generations left. Yeah. Um, we got next is uh, the eighth gen, which is the PS4, the Xbox One, and depending on who you ask, the Wii U and the Switch. The Switch is current gen, and I will murder anybody who says otherwise. <laughs> uh, let's do the Wii U, the weakest one of that whole generation. Agree? C tier. C tier. Okay, where in C tier? Mm, mm, mm. I, I think above everything. Uh, C tier's got some shit in it right now. It's going above everything. Yeah. yeah. So, but so, the thing is, like, the the Wii U, God, like, that's such a, such a weird thing. So we talked about the Wii having weird input uh, and that being yeah. difficult for third parties to figure out. Uh, the Wii U, same deal. Uh, it had an even weirder input device. Um, uh, it like kind of could use motion controls, but it didn't need to. Uh, it 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 had uh, uh, the gamepad being a second screen was was it, it added another problem for for developers to develop around. Um, yeah. And it was even hard for Nintendo themselves to develop for. They couldn't figure out how best to utilize it. And I don't think there's yeah. any games that really made it a good sell to use the yeah. gamepad. Yeah. Uh, f- most games just used it for map screens or inventory screens. A lot of games at a certain point, like I remember Donkey Kong Country, on the on the menu it said, do you want to play on the tablet or on the TV screen? Mm-hmm. And whichever one you picked, the other screen would just be blank. Yeah. So even, even Nintendo's own games, like just gave up at a certain point it had a good idea uh but it being yeah tethered to the console was was not a good idea yeah being able to play with the tv off awesome and and you know people if you've got families and only one tv uh yeah people could uh watch tv while you're playing the game or i would just go to the fucking bathroom with the game pad and it was awesome yep um but otherwise i don't think any of the games on here were that great uh yeah so yeah i mean it had like it had good games 
Mario Maker, obviously. Um, new Super Mario Brothers. Uh, no, Super Mario Brothers 3D Worlds. That was yes. good. Um, Breath of the Wild is on the Wii U. Let's let's not forget. Uh, Bayonetta 2. Yeah, but would you but... rather play it on the Wii U or the Switch? <laughs> Exactly. And I'll, and if we're going to talk about how Breath of the Wild is on the Wii U, we can also talk about how all of the good Wii U games are <laughs> on the Switch now. So yes. you can throw your Wii U in the fucking garbage. <laughs> yes. Um, Unless you really still want to play Earthbound. This chat's being real weird. Designer Core says the gamepad feels way better than the Switch. What are you on? No. Get a grip like, give off that for the, your Switch. <laughs> the gamepad like is shockingly ergonomic for what it is, but mm. no, it doesn't compare. It's to big me. and heavy, and the screen sucks, and it's not yeah. good. Yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't like a capacitive touchscreen in the age of capacitive touchscreens. Mega Dragon brings up a good point. Virtual, a virtual console. It still had virtual yes. console, but sort of yeah. the Wii, and uh, we got to put it behind the Wii because we might have had yeah. better virtual console. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think top of C tier is is a. Uh... You know, now that you bring up virtual console, I think the Wii is a biz is, is is looking better than it was before because we forgot about virtual yeah, I, console. We did forget about virtual console. But I don't think I would bring it above Xbox. Would I? Yeah, because a virtual console. Because there is a the thing though, because we have in B tier two systems that were on virtual console. <laughs> true. Also true. Uh okay all right uh yeah we, we you top of seat tier no further yeah. questions um now xbox one was a problem yes. uh, that launched uh well it was announced and everybody immediately hated microsoft now i yeah. was a microsoft fanboy at the time because i yes. had a 360 and i loved playing 360 games online with my friends I needed to get the console that all my friends were going to be playing because I wanted to continue to play online with them. Cross-platform play was not a thing in these days. Uh, so I wanted to convince all my friends to get Xbox 360s. I didn't want to have to get a new... I didn't have, want to have to start fresh with a gamer score. I liked my gamer score. Yeah. Um, but then Microsoft came out at E3 and announced all of this trash that just would not work out well, and, it wasn't even at E3. It was the, the special Xbox One launch event, which was predated E3, mm -hmm. where they focused on the fact it was going to be a media-centric device. It was going to be Kinect-centric. It was going to be always connected to the internet at a time when, you know, people weren't ready for that. Um, and, like, they focused on one game, which is Halo 5. No, they didn't even focus on Halo 5. They talked about that stupid fucking Halo TV show that Steven Spielberg <laughs> was supposed to produce for it. They talked about Call of Duty. Call oh, of Duty Ghosts. A you lot know, of people, the worst one. A lot of people think that Halo 5 was the worst Halo. Yeah. Um, so. It was bad. And uh, yeah, it didn't really have a lot of first party stuff besides that. Um, yeah. It was. Uh, and. I mean, part of the whole gimmick also was that you could, it was like a media center. You could, because a lot of people use yeah. the Xbox 360 as like a media center. But um, it had, you could plug your like cable box into it. It had an HDMI yeah. in and out. It was very bizarre. Also, it yeah, launched it, it, with the Kinect because they were, because they thought motion controls were going to be a thing maybe. And it launched for mm -hmm. a lot of money because of that, because it you needed to get it with the Kinect. Um, yeah. It was going to have DRM on all of the games, but they got rid of that. Um, it was it was a horrible launch, uh, and it got a lot better, but that was only yeah. after the the Xbox uh, One S and the Xbox One X came yeah. out. It, it it really is strange because it kind of had the same fall and rise as the PlayStation Three did. Mm -hmm. And there was a point where I genuinely felt the Xbox One was a better system than the PS4. It, it, was, at However, the, it was at the tail end, I think. Tail end, <laughs> yes. However, the PlayStation 4 just did such a better job offering games, having a bigger third-party uh, support system, and just overall better presentation than the Xbox One did throughout the entire 
generation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Like the X, I, the Xbox One is definitely B tier. It's definitely it's def, Xbox One I'm, is definitely B tier. I, I think if we're taking an average between the early PlayStation, I'm um, between the early Xbox One and the late Xbox One, I think it might be top of C. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's. I think PlayStation Four is uh, is B. You really? You think PlayStation Four is B? I don't know, but we'll get to that. I'll put okay. I'll I'll put a uh, I'll put Xbox uh, at the bottom of B, way bottom. Uh, okay. Now let's talk about PlayStation Four. Okay. Um, I think. Yes. I I think. You know, it came out of the gate with the right messaging, with the right words to say um, it had the best games of the generation overall, I'd, I'd say. Um, it finally had a good online system. Uh, it had a, the, the dual sent the dual shock Four, despite the stupid trackpad on it was a great controller. <laughs> Not better than the, you know, the Xbox one controller, I will say, but Still a great controller. It might have been the best uh, PlayStation controller. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like the fact that you can put your own hard drive in it. That was nice. I've yes. done that. That, that you know, really does save a lot of space and headache. Um, I, I'll, I'm I, having a... It did have the disc eject issue and, and the fan issue. That yeah. was more... Well, the original Xbox One also was, was garbage. Well, also too, I don't think the the issues with the PlayStation Four, like those issues, were as widespread as like the Red Ring of Death right. or even the Yellow Light of Death or anything like that. T Total Warlock says it was so fucking loud. Ours was never was. loud. Ours was never it, loud. I, I've I've seen was, other people's that was screaming because I guess a lot of yeah. dust gets in the fan easily, but ours never really was like that. And we had a launch one, but we did have True. the disc eject issue. True. Yeah. Um. Um, but no, you're right. It did have a much better library than the Xbox. Um, yeah. So, I I'm, I don't know. I'm having a really hard time thinking of like major problems with the PlayStation Four. I don't have any major there were problems. problems. I, I I think my biggest problem with putting it somewhere on this list is that uh, it kind of just happened, um, and true. I barely have any hindsight, and I I feel bored by the PlayStation Four. You know. <laughs> See, I'm still playing my PS4 and Xbox One, so I'm not bored with them yet. I mean, no, it had a lot know. of great games. I just the concept yeah. of thinking about a PlayStation 4 bores me because I like it just it literally just happened, and yeah. and uh, it was a good console, but uh, like like it was good because it had good games, and those I games think... are, are you could still play them and they're still great, and yes. and most of the games that you're playing on a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X are PlayStation 4 games. <laughs> Yeah. Like I'm still playing the game I play the most still is Warzone and that's a fucking PlayStation 4 game. I think a lot of my problems with the PS4 came much later in their life in its life and it's like kind of minor things overall like once Xbox announced backwards compatibility and like kept with it kept updating it I thought True. that was brilliant and I don't understand why Sony never implemented something like that on their end. Um the whole crossplay debacle was i think a real big black eye for sony it still is to this day um so so like so would... in the grand scheme of things th that doesn't really hurt like the overall playstation 4 experience i don't think would you say it's better or worse than the xbox 360 i'd say overall better oh the 360 yes this is the problem with tier lists <laughs> The problem with tier lists is it's the problem with the fact that aside from the stupid fucking hardware issues, the Xbox 360 is almost perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's it's that hardware issue. Like, I don't know. It's it's like so tough for me. So 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 I, so uh, I, the, most of the reason why we like why we hold the 360 in such high regard is because that library is so good. But the PlayStation yes. 4 also had a great library. It did, yeah. It was like just like more advanced versions of those same games. <laughs> um, so 
I'm inclined to say that it's above that. I don't know if it's above the 16-bit console generation, though. Okay, I think that's fair. Okay, because it did have a... Uh, the 16-bit era didn't have uh, the sort of technical flaws that we have in, in uh, today's gaming sphere. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, so I got a PlayStation 4 above 360 under the Genesis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a really weird place to put it. Yeah. Uh, we like retro games here. I don't know what to tell you. Um, All right. I guess now we should do the switch. Yeah, because it's kind of in between. Yeah. Um, I think the switch is S tier. Yeah, I might be a little biased. I no, I agree. I'm putting it behind PlayStation Two, but I don't know. I don't know about that because it's it's way more versatile. It is way more versatile. You have, a, I think, a much larger variety of games. You have access to a much wider array of games in terms of like spanning generations. You know, all the way back to the NES to today. Whereas the PlayStation Two was really just um, from the PS One era to the end of the PS Two era, and, and it has a lot. I mean. I mean Nintendo has no sort of backwards compatibility whatsoever, but it has mm -hmm. all uh, it has a lot of older games on it. And it's not yes. as good as Virtual Console, but it still has a lot of that stuff that we would have wanted anyway. Um yeah. and even games from other publishers that are older, like even like Super Meat Boy and shit. Like yeah. They're still shoveling things over to the Switch. Um and i think that makes the library even better uh but of course what makes it the best is the convenience and, and it's got yes. some of nintendo's best uh stuff too like breath of the wild yeah super mario, breath of wild, mario odyssey i um, might be inclined to put it over playstation 2 i just i just know people think i'm biased because i kind of <laughs> am yeah no i mean you're not wrong i mean the switch really it, like it really is like a unique video game system and in many ways it is the platonic ideal of a video game system because it has anything and everything that you would want to play is on the switch and you can play mm -hmm. it any way you any way you want if you want to play it in handheld you can if you want to play it on the couch you can on like on the tv um and you can use a controller that's best suited for you you don't have to use what nintendo gives you there's a wide array of options out there um it has a it has a very robust library of not just big budget games triple a games nintendo games but indie games this is probably the best platform for indie games that isn't the pc true um so 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 i have never so the whole chat is blown up about joy con drift like like that's the only thing that's that's uh that's relevant. <laughs> like it's yeah. the only like, it's the only thing that you can you can you can take down Juggernaut Nintendo Switch is 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 the 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 Achilles heel the Joy-Con drift. Will mm -hmm. you are the only one of the two of us who have experienced Joy-Con drift without inducing it yourself. So so right. <laughs> so how much does Joy-Con drift affect its placement on this list? Now I will say we gave Xbox 360 a lot of shit for the Red Ring of Death. Joy-Con drift, I mean, it doesn't take out your console entirely, yes, but it's still a very widespread issue. It's a widespread issue, and it sucks, and it's inconvenient, but it doesn't cripple the Switch. Hmm. And, it, like, you can still use your Switch. You just have to find a workaround. You, ha you have to use a different controller uh, for the time being. Or, you know... I the people I know people who go out and buy all the different color Joy-Con controllers because they like to you know customize and you know whatnot their Switch. So I don't like look Joy-Con drift is a problem and it sucks that we're what five years into the Switch's life cycle and they still haven't really fixed it yet or they haven't even come close to saying there's a fix for it. But it doesn't to me it doesn't look like it doesn't break the system the way the red ring of death broke the 360 um i am inclined to agree with you um 
I mean, it is a major problem. I don't want people to think we're yeah. undermining the problem of Joy-Con drift, but I, I mean, I think it. I think it's literally the only thing anybody talks about, like as if there's, because this is nothing else. There's no other problems that we could talk about yeah. with the, with the with the Nintendo Switch, besides the the dock, which isn't really. I mean, it is Nintendo's fault, but also like uh, they're trying to tell you not to use third party docks. Um. Yeah. Um. So, Mister Free in the chat says the D pad. Or the lack thereof. Uh, yeah, that sucks. L- listen, That's... I don't, I don't like playing the Switch in portable mode at all. So I freaking play it docked all the time, and I have a great time. And, and if, you know, if, if, somebody... if I need to take it with me somewhere, I, I'm, I'm willing to cope with the lack of D-pad, even though I have a freaking D-pad in my uh, Joy-Con. Thank you very much. Yeah, as somebody who and has, this who one does is play twenty dollars. This one with with the D-pad in it is twenty dollars. As someone who plays the Switch primarily in portable mode with the stock uh, Joy Cons and whatnot, you get used to it. You you learn mm-hmm. to figure out how to, you know, play it. You know, the PlayStation controllers have split D pads like that. It's it's not that different, mm-hmm. you know, from playing from playing a DualShock controller. Someone in the chat's gonna get into the specifics of it and whatnot. I don't care. <laughs> um. So I don't know. Do we put it above PlayStation? I wouldn't. But I think just, I, that might just be nostalgia blindness for me. But I, I honestly do feel like the PlayStation Two might be the greatest video game console console of all time. I'll leave it because we don't have the we don't have the uh, the the privilege of hindsight right now with the Switch. True. But I feel like I feel like the Switch is going to be one of the greatest consoles of all time. And, yeah. and especially when we think about it after a few i mean even right after the 360 i was like that was my favorite console generation <laughs> yeah i was like ready to I, I was i was i was all in i'll leave it where it is um okay next up we have uh what playstation 5 and the xbox series x i'm gonna shit on the playstation 5 i feel like okay uh the, I think the worst part about the PlayStation Five is that um, it most of the games that everybody's playing on it right now are PlayStation Four games, and a lot of them aren't even optimized for the PlayStation Five at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's a technical powerhouse, but it's not utilizing a lot of the a lot of the tech that's there. You still can't play games at fourteen forty p, which is really bizarre, especially if you want to utilize the high frame rate that this thing has. Um, yeah. It baffles me. Um, we're going to talk about it. Uh, I mean, if we get time to even talk about the current news, <laughs> but they finally just now, almost a whole year after the fucking thing's been out, they just now are allowing you to use the expansion slot so you can have more memory because this thing has less memory than the kind Xbox of, uh, kind of. Series X. Yeah, kind of. And it might not even be, you might put, it's a beta and you might even yeah. put your, your hard drive in there and then they don't release it to the public. <laughs> yeah, and they might just pull it from from the from the full release. Um, yeah. And the first party games that everybody's getting this thing for aren't even there yet. Right now we got Returnal, yay, and we got uh, Dark yay. Souls, which is our uh, Demon Souls. Demon Souls, which is good only if you like those types of games. Um, otherwise, I think that the games that are releasing for both platforms, I think the best place to play them is on Xbox, and I hate to say that yeah um so i got a lot of beef well, with the playstation and also it's well, huge because... and ugly <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i like so if i don't have a ps5 or an xbox series system uh mm. i am i am not in the next gen of gaming i'm still in in last gen however based on your experience with both systems and based on everything i've seen in my you know research and keeping up with the gaming news there doesn't seem to be as many positives with the playstation 5 as there does with the xbox series true so i feel i mean it's still very early to tell that they this could you know be another ps3 situation where it gets better over over time but as of right now i feel like the playstation 5 would be bottom of B, top of C. 
Uh, Total Warlock says also has better hardware, controller, customer service, and consumerism. I don't know what better consumerism means. Oh, like more people <laughs> want it? Better hardware than what? It, it's not more powerful than the Xbox Series X. I think people say it like is a little bit, but like they're not even utilizing the power. <laughs> yeah. Um, customer service? I don't think so. I think it has, I think people say it has very poor customer service. Um, and controller, it has more tech in the controller. It's not a better controller. Yeah. Um, if games like Returnal really show off how great that controller can be, but not everybody's going to use it in that way. Um, oh, he was a total world access. I was talking about the Series X. Better, cons what does better consumerism mean? Well, then I agree with a lot maybe, of what you're saying. Maybe then. it means like it's more consumer friendly because it has better like better features that are more you know conducive to what like, consumers would want, like game backwards pass. compatibility, Game Pass, smart delivery. Um, I keep talking about high frame rate. They they have something called FPS Boost, which makes it so older games, which they already have a huge library of 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 old games like backwards compatible stuff that you could just straight up play on your series x mm -hmm. and they have some shit where it auto optimizes the game and it automatically adds a higher frame rate and playstation doesn't have anything like that um yeah so uh yeah i got beef with playstation but i think it's still i mean right now it's really i mean that's all we have to go on is now and right yeah. now it's really not that great but however i would still probably put it above xbox one for sure um okay and maybe a maybe above wii because i mean even though it has um it still has a lot of playstation 4 games you can play on it even though they're not optimized yeah. um or if they are optimized, you have to jump through hoops to get that version of it. You do have to. It's really a pain in the ass. Um, and compared to Xbox, you literally just hit. You start the game, and it's like, oh, here's the here's the Series X version. You yeah. can. When I first got my PlayStation Five, I was accidentally getting PlayStation Four versions of games. A lot um, of people were. I'm gonna put it above uh, original Xbox. Okay. And it's behind NES. <laughs> <laughs> Um, however, now we're on Xbox Series X uh, and S, which I think the S is often overlooked, but shouldn't be. That yeah. console is fucking sick. So uh, mm -hmm. everything I've seen of the Xbox Series, both the Series X and S, this is what the Xbox One, this is the Xbox One I've always wanted. Yes. You know, it, it's doing everything right. It's, you know, it's got a, it's got a good interface finally. Um, it's, you know, the backwards compatibility is perfect. The fact that smart delivery works and is just a thing at all is brilliant. Um, I think it's the just controller... way, it's way easier to play games on it. It downloads updates while it's just off or asleep. Uh, yeah. and, and you know what? It's not even, it, it acts like it's off because I can unplug it from the wall and nothing happens. Um, yeah. Whereas the PlayStation 5 is like a pain in the ass. Uh, it doesn't always download shit. Sometimes it'll just, it'll just. Yeah delete your progress um so yeah i i, I think the x the xbox series x and s are just way easier it, 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 it's it's yeah. a it's a much friendlier place to play your games plus game pass better service than whatever sony has yeah and, and like right now i'm trying i'm trying the high frame rate stuff and i'm like oh shit uh halo's got high frame rate all right let me download the master the whole master chief collection oh wait <laughs> ori will the wisps has a high frame rate let me download all the whole game of ori and the will of the wisps oh rainbow six siege i haven't played that in in a dog's year and i played it on playstation 4 but guess what i have game pass let me download all of rainbow six siege and you can't do that on playstation so uh yeah i think it's a much better console um yeah Again, it, it's I, like it's I, early to tell. Mm -hmm. You know, still very early to tell. But I think I think it's top of B tier. Uh honestly. honestly. I agree. I think I have fonder memories of the Dreamcast, so I'll I'll put it behind Dreamcast. But yeah, I think it's top of B tier. 
Uh, somebody in the chat said, Bob knows that PlayStation 5 can download in rest mode, right? Yeah, but it's like on, and like the light's on, and it's like, it, and it could it, it could turn off. If it, if it unplugs from the wall, everything's fucked. So I learned the hard way that a PlayStation 4, it may be able to download in rest mode, but you know what it can't do? Install from disk in rest mode. Ah. You know, you put Spider-Man in, you know, leave it on all night so it can well, install in rest mode and you wake up in the morning and it ain't fucking installed. That's something that PlayStation 5s do. It'll it'll install the update for the game yeah, and, or download the game. But then the installation is a second step. Whereas yeah. on Xbox, it just does the whole fucking thing. So yeah. there's a lot of weird. This Listen, they're both pretty much the same. There's a lot of weird little uh, uh, quality of life and user experience quirks that makes the Xbox just a better experience to play the games on. Um, when the PlayStation gets a bigger library of first party stuff, this might be a different story. But right now, there's really nothing that is, should draw you to the PlayStation 5 over an Xbox. Um, so I think the top of B tier is a great place for it. Hey. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here. Um, Get out of here. And. I think that's it. <laughs> After an hour and 45 minutes, we have finished the best consoles of all time tier list. Home consoles. The, the official Wolf Den best consoles of all time, except no substitutes. This tier list is so controversial. It's, I mean, it, no matter what we did, yeah, there's fucking people here who think the Wii U is better than the Switch. Like, if those people exist in real life, then there's nothing we could have done to make this not controversial. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, here it is. Everybody, take a screenshot uh, and yeah. make your own. How about that? Yeah. And, and you could uh, tweet it at us. Use the hashtag Wolf Den Console Tier List. How about that? Yeah. And uh, we'll we'll take a we'll take a look. Yeah. Uh, not ranking uh, handhelds? No, because we will save that for a completely different uh, uh, time. Yes. Uh, but I think I think we did a pretty good job here. I think I think we did too. I mean, there will always be like you know a couple we might want to move around here and there. Uh, we might disagree on the placement of like one or two of them, but I think overall, I can I can sleep easy at night with this list. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read them all out for podcast listeners. If you want, just watch the, just, just look at the, I mean, we, yeah. you, you watch the whole thing again, I guess. <laughs> uh, it'll take, it'll take a while to read it out. Uh, anyway, we got Tux Bobble with 22 months. Thank you very much. We got Mako Fox with 50 bits. Since Bob is a lost cause, I now turn to you, Will. Can you please upload a personal channel video? Also, these tier list episodes are my favorite Wolf Den podcast topics. Could you make could you maybe do one on the best 3D Mario games? Didn't I just do that? No, I didn't. Did I? Did you do a tier list? I didn't do a tier list, but didn't I put them in order? I don't know. Uh, or I think it was game Mario games on the Switch. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because almost all of them are on the Switch. Um... Yeah, I didn't do that. I didn't. Yeah, we could do that. We, we I'll, I'll add that to the to the list here. We have yeah. Best three D Mario games. Best two D Mario games, or we could just do best Mario game. Um. Also, best best handheld tier list. Yes. Um. Okay. There you have it. Yes. Uh, there's a, a bunch of news here. We could try to plow through some of it. Yeah. Um, I think the important thing here is that PlayStation 5 storage expansion is in beta and it's complicated. Yeah. Um, I'll, try to, I'll try to summarize this as best I can. So Sony announced that um, the ability to add expandable um, SSD drives to your PlayStation 5 um, is now entering beta. Um, so if you're part of the, the PlayStation beta program, then you can start utilizing this feature. If not, then you will have to wait. I'm sorry. Um, but 
it's not as simple as just buying a buying a drive, installing it in your PlayStation, and calling it a day. There's a lot more to it. Uh, it, ha it has to be M.2 solid state drives, first of all. So you can't use traditional SATA um, SSDs. Uh, and and, and so, it can't be too big because the slot is very tiny. And yeah, a lot me, of these M.2 drives have heat sinks that could prevent it from working. And so, right, Gadget so, and, and Digital Foundry have a good list of, of ones that are compatible. Yeah. So before before we get into it, it's the reason why this is it this is a thing at all is because the PlayStation 5 architecture is tied directly to its custom made solid state drive. It's PlayStation 5 games run off that specific solid state drive and take advantage of that solid state drive's speed and functionalities to directly um, go from drive to processor to your screen with little to no load time. Um, and traditional hard drives can't match that power and that speed, so that's why they need solid-state drives, and specifically the M.2 NVMe-style drives. Having said that, here here are some prerequisites um, for that you need to know before you start going and buying uh, new drives. You're limited in capacity... And can choose something that's you can choose. Sorry, sorry. Let me start over. The minimum requirement uh, for for the PlayStation Five SSD is 250 gigs, all the way up to four terabytes. So you you have that that range to work in, which you know overall isn't that bad. Uh, the read speeds need to be at least uh, 5,500 megabytes per second. The module itself, the size of the of the disk drive of the SSD, uh, has to be one of five specific dimensions in length: thirty millimeters, forty-two millimeters, sixty millimeters, eighty millimeters, one hundred and ten <laughs> millimeters long. Those are one of those five lengths long, and it has to be twenty-two millimeters wide. Uh, Sony says that a 25 millimeter drive is not supported by the PS5. You will also need one with this interface. You ready? It has to be a PCIe Gen 4 times 4 M.2 NVMe SSD. But ba basically, just look up a list. You have a list from yeah. GameSpot. I have a list from yeah. Eurogamer. I said Engadget. I meant Eurogamer. Um, there's plenty. There's plenty of that will work, yeah. and, and they, these all seem pretty good. Uh, and they're right. not that expensive for a one terabyte. Well, the thing is, like, because you can't just the you can't just buy and then uh, uh, the fuck. There's the thing is, there's like there's so many like syllables and letters and like abbreviations in this. It's I always I always call them hard drives because that's just uh, you yeah. know it's always been hard uh, storage has always been hard drives, and yes. I feel like our parents who call everything tapes. Yes. Because <laughs> media has always been tapes for them. And storage has always been hard drives for me. I went to Best Buy the other day looking for an SSD. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, I'm just looking for an external hard drive. And they get, pointed me to the hard drives. And I meant, oh, I meant SSDs. And they're all oh, SSDs. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be over here. And the guy yeah. was like, did you know you could plug this into a PlayStation 5? I was like, oh, yeah, right? <laughs> so the thing is, so the these style of, of SSDs, the, the NVMe SSDs, there's a wide variety of them, hence why like Sony had to specify the length and the width of them. But also, you can buy them basically naked, and Sony requires a heat sink for them. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't come with a heat sink, then you have to go out and find your own heat sink, and you have to make sure it still fits within the small size of the slot that they're oh, God. providing you. And then there's more. Because it's not just a matter of like finding the slot and put it in. You have to partially dismantle your console by taking off the big white plates on it, unscrewing the expansion slot, carefully putting the SSD in, adjusting like the space saver that's in there, and then reinstalling everything. You literally have to take the thing apart in order to put the SSD in there and then put it back together again. T taking the uh, taking the uh, the cover off of a PlayStation Five is very easy, and and uh, yeah. and putting the, just throwing 
the SSD in there should be relatively easy. Uh, putting a heatsink on it, I feel like, fuck that. <laughs> if it melts, it melts. Um, yeah. But putting it in there should be relatively easy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, but anyway, again, don't go out and buy an SSD right now because this thing is only in beta and there's no guarantee yeah. it's going to make it to market. Yeah. Anytime soon, at least. Uh, f- one last thing. You have to make sure that your PlayStation 5 is fully up to date before you even start this process. Well, well fully up to date in the beta. In the beta. Well, so, I'm assuming so, that it also means when it's out of beta, you have to make sure... Well, yeah, you need the update that allows for it. And right now, the update right. is only in beta. So, so right. that's of course, it has to be up to date because you need that update. Right. But they're telling you to update it before you put the SSD in. That's right. important. Obviously. Um, anyway. And it is at this point where we, sh- we will remind you that to expand the memory on the Xbox Series X or S... You just buy a memory card. <laughs> well, hold on. It, it's proprietary on Xbox, it's, so it's a little it's shittier. It's proprietary. But at it's least you can shittier. do it right now. The PlayStation, right. it's it's a little more complicated. And it, it's you, you can do it, and it's easy. You just buy it, and you slot it in the, the, the expansion slot in the back of the system. Mm-hmm. If, if That card for a terabyte retails for about $220, which sounds like it's a lot, but A... That's about the price of your typical uh, NVMe uh, one terabyte SSD. Uh, and two, it's currently on oh. sale right now for like 100, 190 bucks. I did not realize it was a, a yes. similar price. Yeah. So I, I think like initially people were like, well, because it's proprietary, it'll probably stay that price. Whereas if you just buy any NVMe drive, it'll that will fluctuate with what the market is. And, mm-hmm. you know, eventually it will go down like hard drive prices normally do but i think the complexity of updating your ps5 hard um storage is starting to like turn people off and starting to like upset people because Mm -hmm. this is something that is going to need to be done and the fact that it's so clunky and cumbersome on the playstation 5 i think it's 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 genuinely upsetting uh Goose wants to know what NVMe are you buying? Uh, I'd be inclined to get either Samsung, Corsair, or Western Digital, but the Western Digital Black is expensive, so probably not that. Yeah, uh, yeah probably Corsair or Samsung. Uh, probably Samsung, honestly. Oh, the, yeah. the Corsair looks like it's got a giant heatsink. There you go. But they say it fits, so... Um. Yeah, I, I'll do this if I can make a video on it. I, otherwise, I I don't really I don't really need it. I don't use my PlayStation that much. Um. Anyway, uh, let's move on because we we're out of time here. Okay. I just the only other thing I really want to talk about is the Polymega. I think oh, everything else yeah. we can say fuck it to. Okay, you don't want to talk about the McDonald's dual sense that's not happening. <laughs> no, because it's not happening. But it was. I brought this up on stream the other day. It does look pretty freaking cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, the Polymega was a remarkable system capable of running original software for consoles such as the SNES, Mega Drive, or Genesis for us Yanks, PC Engine, or Turbo Graphics for us Yanks, and even the Saturn. But while the unit itself lives up to its, while the unit itself lives up to its potential, creator Play Maji has had something of a nightmare when it comes to actually getting it into the hands of people who pre-ordered it back in 2018. Ouch. The the machine was heavily delayed, and Playmaji faced an issue with North American retailer Walmart, via which many thousands of customers uh, had placed their orders. The latest issue is related to an ongoing civil unrest in Myanmar, where the Polymega <laughs> is being manufactured. Oh, boy. You don't think of these things. Uh, Playma- uh, Playmaji's communication during the past few years has come under fire from several quarters, and the company has n- only now broken its silence regarding the status of the Polymega pre-orders. Playmaji has revealed that the new ship date is September 12th, 2021, uh, for systems pre-ordered between 2018 and April 2020, while complete fulfillment of these pre-orders is anticipated by the end of October. If you placed uh, if you placed an order 
with Polyma with one of Playmaji's global distribution partners, then it's going to be a slightly longer wait. Uh, partial shipments will be provided to Japanese and European distributor NK Trading and worldwide distribution. Additional units will be provided to them through the winter. So, so uh, if you pre hold on, let me yeah, let me give people some background in case they don't even know what the fuck a Polymega is. Um, okay. Polymega is a retro game console that uh, it's FPGA, right? No, it uh, that was one of the big controversies at first. They said it was going to be FPGA, and then slowly but eventually walked back and said it was going to be software emulation okay so this thing's almost entirely useless but anyway <laughs> um it, it, the whole gimmick here is that uh it's a it's a retro game console uh, and it uses different modules based on whatever console you want to play so you can slot out the front of it and slot in uh sega genesis or nes or whatever uh, yeah. and you can use the original controllers for those systems and everything um, yeah. On screen um, right now, I have um, a video from E3 2019 when we got to get our hands on it. Yeah. And it was pretty good. Um, yeah. Um, I think one of the bigger selling points, though, is that the base system um, is actually a, has a disk drive. So it can actually um, emulate disk based systems, including the Sega Saturn, which was notoriously difficult to emulate for a very long time. This is the first um, aftermarket. Uh, video game console that can actually play Saturn games, which is really cool and interesting. But it's had, as I've just read, it's had a very long road to get to where it is now. And they're just now saying that they're going to ship uh, the system for people who pre-ordered it back in 2018. Yeah. Um, Another cool thing is you can uh, put a game on it and it'll dump the ROM onto its, uh, yeah. onto its base console, which is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I mean... Uh, they also said that they could emulate Sega Saturn, and it turned out they were that they were wrong that it wasn't being emulated <laughs> when they showed the footage. It was it was like the arcade the arcade or footage, yeah. Uh, and they yeah, they lied about, about it being FPGA. They went well, they didn't lie, but yeah. they went back on it. Um, yeah. So I feel like there's really not anything exciting here anymore about the Polymega. I'm I'm actually getting really disappointed. Like, what's the difference if it's not if it's all software? Why would I get this? Over, especially if I have to buy all the different modules, why the fuck would yeah. I get this over than just getting a Raspberry Pi or playing all these games on a PC? I think, um, I think uh, for one thing, the disk drive is like the big selling point because then you can emulate, you know, the disk space systems, which not many people offer. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. Some people do, I think, might find uh, a convenience of just having one system and then sliding in and out different. Because I think you can dump the ROMs to the the main base system and just play off of that, but yeah, I don't know if in a world where like analog exists and like even uh, Hyperkin, I don't think this is gonna last very long. Hopefully, people Especially open it up enough where we can dump the ROMs and put them yeah. on a computer or something. Yeah. Uh. F so if you if you pre-ordered this between Jan uh, 2018 and April of 2020. They say you should start getting your things, your shipment by the end of October. However, if you pre-ordered after April 2020, you're going to have to wait longer because orders placed between 2020 and 2021 via Polymega's website have been delayed to the first half of 2022. The GC1 light gun has also been delayed and will now launch in the first half of 2022. Pre-orders for that accessory will remain open throughout the holiday season. Um, I suggest if you're interested in this, you watch this video, uh, this old video of us. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts at about 14 minutes. Um, the best stuff at E3 wasn't from Nintendo. That's our E3 2019 video. Um, yeah. Yeah, check that out. And I guess they, they have some updates since then. But uh, we asked them a lot of tough questions, I remember. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we're done with news and everything. Uh, okay because it's late and we gotta hurry up um yeah did, did you know what we have a new tweet of the week emote in the chat it's a it's a i did not know that it's a gif emote everybody uh why don't you give me some of that while i play this tweet of the week, tweet of the week, tweet of the week. here it is boys the tweet of the week i had a tweet of the week and it got deleted and i forgot what it was <laughs> but now we have this 
uh, people really think this bowling shit is hard, and then it's a dude <laughs> doing a layup with a bowling ball. Nice. Uh, all right. There's Good the there, there's the uh, there's the gif. There's the gif emote. Wow. That's, Amazing. That's beautiful. Uh, okay, now we're gonna talk to you guys very briefly. Yes. Uh, do we do last week's comments real quick? Yeah. You gotta right. do the whole spiel. If you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, Wolf Den uh, podcast is part of the show. We will answer you, and of course, everybody starts spamming the tweet of the week gift because we will get to you when we are done with everybody else. Keyholes from last week's Wolf Den podcast says the sad thing about the Activision Blizzard sexual harassment case is it doesn't even surprise me. I never play online with voice unless I'm playing exclusively with friends because I'm so sick and tired of the sudden change in how opponents and teammates alike treat me as soon as they hear my voice and realize I'm a woman. However, it does make it extremely satisfying to then shoot them in the face in game. I don't even like playing online games with other people. Uh, yeah, but, me neither. Uh, I'd imagine it gets exponentially worse. Uh, yeah, if you're on the other side. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think the Activision Blizzard. I mean, I think everybody knows that like this has been a problem for a very long time, and I hope it's not just in like the development side of things, but in gaming in general. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that like this Activision Blizzard reckoning, like really is like the big sweeping change throughout not just the industry side of things but the player side of things to make things a better safer place for everyone because mm -hmm. everyone deserves to play games in peace technology addict says every time people bring up nintendo holding back their classic games it reminds me of the old disney vault same shitty practice it is, it is the exact same it is it's very yeah i think i think though now with the advent of disney plus the vault isn't really a thing anymore. So, you know, maybe Nintendo should also get with the times. <laughs> Make their own Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could argue that Switch Online, like NES games and SNES games on Switch Online, is their version of Disney Plus. It's just a it's shit version. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel Mincer says, it was a bad week for news this week. Uh, in quotes the wolf bros every freaking week also i've got to disagree heavily nothing will ever replace the movie going experience that a theater gives the viewer any movie seen in theaters is better than watching at home in my opinion but i still love you bros um yeah i i think there is something to seeing things in theaters because like i was saying like uh when i first when the pandemic first happened and everybody was that they were thinking about releasing stuff digitally i was like good everything should be released digitally yeah. uh, anything to make it easier for us is better uh but i stopped watching movies because <laughs> i used to go <laughs> to the movies like as an event like the day of a, a yeah. movie comes out i would go watch it it was like a thing um so i i get it i get the whole movie going experience uh but i really think that it's i i think that it's seeing things in theaters is a little overblown like yeah certain, like like yeah seeing like avengers in theaters was insane i seen people go nuts when i'd seen jackass in theaters everybody like people <laughs> like throwing up and like running out yeah. because things were so gross like that was awesome but yeah. um i think seeing like uh what was it that like guillermo del toro movie uh with the fish guy like seeing, oh, Shape of Water. Yeah, seeing Shape of Water in yeah. theaters, not going to be any better of an experience than just seeing yeah. that at all. And I saw it the day it like, came out. I saw it at uh, like a midnight release. So Yeah, like, I'm not going to deny that there's, you know, there isn't a, a magic to going to see a movie in a, in the theaters. There is something about going to, like a like, a dimly lit room with a, with a group of people, or even just by yourself and watching something on the biggest screen possible with the best sound possible and just getting absorbed into the film that way. Um, but that being said, there's also absolutely nothing wrong with watching movies home at home. Most of my favorite movies I've seen, I saw for the first time at home on TV. And we're talking about like, you know, this is the 90s. When I first saw Raiders of the Lost Ark, it was on a shitty CRT in 4x3. <laughs> I didn't even get the whole film. I don't think I saw that widescreen to, like, the Blu-ray edition of that movie. Come uh, to think of it. But anyway, 
like the, the point is especially like when the world was changing and people needed to adjust it was frustrating to see hollywood and like the movie industry in general fight back you know the need to adapt to try and stick so close yeah. to like the old way of thinking and i know especially because i got in, i got in a lot of trouble for not taking scarlett johansson's side with the whole <laughs> disney thing i know now like it's a lot more complicated than that there are a lot of like contracts and like deals that get well she lost out on a lot of money because of that right but it's you know not just between actor and studio but also between movie theaters and studios between uh different distribution companies and things like that there's this this really hard working moving thing like a watch everything needs to be like tuned properly and moving properly in order for it to work properly and the second one of those things isn't working properly, rather than trying to fix it or find another way to tell time, the watchmaker just decided to throw up his hands and like, I don't know what to do. Still try to fix the watch. I argue that uh, a lot of people have better, uh, like, like, like you said, you, you, you can go to the theater and watch it with the best, uh, on the best screen possible with the best, like, sound possible and i'd argue yeah. that that a lot of people have much better equipment at home than what you're going to see in a movie theater true like just because it's on a giant screen doesn't mean that it's a better screen because it's still only going to be at max 4k yeah <laughs> like uh and you could just do that at home and the the, the freaking dynamic range is probably much better on your own tv uh audio is going to be better if you just put fucking headphones on um so yeah, I don't. I, like, I get the whole going. Like, certain movies, I get going and, and experiencing the whole thing, like Avengers movies and stuff, uh, yeah. uh, Marvel movies. But um, for just regular old movies, like, uh, yeah, I, I think I, I don't know. I, again, I'm I'm starting to change my opinion a little bit because I'm not seeing movies anymore because I used to do it as the event. Uh, but yeah. now I'm, I'm I'm I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm, I'm, I still yeah. think uh, I, I still think the movie industry needs to be shaken up like it's be, like it, like it's yeah. happening, but it's it, they're not handling it well. Yeah, I, and for the longest time there was like the idea that the the traditional movie theater model was dying, was falling apart, and things were slowly moving towards the home viewing experience. And I thought that the pandemic would have sped that process up. But it really just showed like how stuck in their ways, like the 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 whole system is. I mean, they they did try and they did, you know, do things like the Disney Plus Premiere Access or HBO uh, Max putting their movies on day and date. The the window from theatrical release to digital rental had shrunk considerably. Um, I don't know. I guess I was just thinking of. I was just thinking of a more extreme method to take rather than what they just, what they did. And mm -hmm. now they're starting to walk back on it as more and more people are getting vaccinated and things are opening up more. Uh, Freddie Wong brought up a good point. Uh, he, on Twitter, he said, I wonder if TikTok and that age of like social media is going to change the way like the film industry starts thinking. And if they'll bring back uh, 60 minute movies, which I think is a great idea yeah <laughs> to like change up the format a little bit because it is yeah it is weird like some movies need to be three hours some movies need to be one <laughs> most movies don't need to be three hours yeah yeah anyway uh let's plow through here emily van engen yeah. says i'm insulted that you think i don't make it to the end of the video to hear you guys say bye but i'll get over it she means bye bye well, yeah, bye. You're one of the good ones, Emily. Don't let anyone <laughs> tell you otherwise. Stir Sticks Burke says, got nothing to talk about? Maybe pull a random game to talk about? I missed the backlog, fellas. All right, fuck you, Fred, for including that <laughs> in here. I mean, I think we might have to consider... Shut up! ...something. <laughs> we'll release all of the old backlogs on DVD. We'll start Kickstarter. There you go. That. All right, we're in the chat. Uh, yeah. 
Bob, how long of a beard are you going for? I don't fucking know, dude. I will say though that on one side it's get it grows longer on my left side. I don't know what that's about. That's odd. I just shaved this weekend. It was nice. It was oh, that's refreshing. nice. Refreshing. I do need to trim it, but I do I do like yeah. having it kind of long. Yo, let me know the next time you get a Manscaped sponsorship. Cause I think I need one. <laughs> I think they're mad. I think they don't like how uh, how well I I did. But it's fucking. I love oh, really? Manscaped. Manscaped's awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't think enough people bought it. I th that was on my uh, collaboration with Wood. Maybe uh, yeah. Maybe the crossover of viewers. Maybe they just don't need their ball shit. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Um, Drew Suave with 13 months. Hello, guys. I need coffee. You should. Uh, well, it's late. The responsible thing to do would not be to drink coffee, but yeah, don't let me tell you what to do. I don't know what type of life you're living. Uh, Dra uh, Mecha Dragon with 100 bits says, All right, Bob, I'm going to need your coffee expertise for a second. The trade website states that it's better. Hold off on getting anything trade until Thursday because I have a trade sponsorship in the next video and I need you to use my, my code. <laughs> The trade website states that it's much better to grind your own coffee beans over just getting them pre-ground absolutely and already crushed. Is that true? Yes, it's 100% true. And Or does it not matter in the end? It's 1,000% true that you should definitely... Because, okay. The whole bean saves the flavor for longer. When you grind the coffee up, you're creating more surface area for all of for the air and the water and everything to get into and suck the 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 flavor out of it so uh you're supposed to grind your coffee right before you make the coffee that way it has all of the flavor still in it um that being said you should have a really good grinder if you're going to grind your coffee um well i mean it's still better to get whole bean even if you have a shitty grinder um but get yourself a good grinder and uh and get whole beans it, it you'll you'll have a better coffee experience and that'll start you down the rabbit hole of uh of being a coffee snob uh so thank you for your 100 bits also wait till thursday trade trade uh i have a special link for trade um unless you've already used trade then don't worry about it uh chris bx says will did you check out motu masters of the universe revelation, revelation. also transformers the movie 86 being released in 4k with steelbook that's fucking sick that movie's sick that is sick. yes my daughter loves the touch <laughs> i uh, played you gotta, her the two minutes to, you got a late night cover <laughs> The song The Touch by Stan Bush okay. from the Transformers movie. I played her the two minutes late night cover that they did with the Cybertronic Spree. She loves it. And then I played her the original Stan Bush version, and she loves that as well. We played it at, at, at my in-laws' house, and they were they were aghast by it. They were flabbergasted by it. They like they didn't know that's not a Disney song, whatever. And <laughs> you know, my father-in-law is like real, like he likes his music, and anything else is wrong. But she fucking went like all out when that song came on so my you know, daughter transformers fan I'm so excited speaking of the movie going experience now i saw transformers 86 like on my own like on my computer and i had a good time it was great but then i saw yeah. it at uh nighthawk which is in brooklyn uh this was oh, a long time it? ago <laughs> yeah and it was fucking amazing and and <laughs> Everybody I went with was like, that sucked. And I was I was like, nah, I had a fucking awesome time. I thought that was sick. I was loving every second of it. It was so good. I mean, that that movie is not, you know, a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. But, like, you can it's, have fun with Transformers. It, it, it is the 80s distilled and, and injected yeah. into your eyeballs. It's a, it's a music video of all 80s music for an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> It's fucking yeah. uh, incredible. Uh, anyway, we'll take like one or two more things, yeah. and, then we, and then we gotta leave. Uh, Kronkosaurus, I have another coffee question. How are you frothing your oat milk? I'm not getting a lot of body. Uh, I use the steam wand in the Breville. Um, it took me a really long time to figure out how to do it. Um, just watch a lot of videos on it. There's no one good video on steaming that'll work. I, I also, I started using regular milk for a little bit of time and uh, it w wasn't really much easier. I mean, it is a little easier to steam regular milk, but oat milk. Also, I use the Califia Farms oat milk. I think that might be necessary too because different oat milks steam differently. Um, 
you, sometimes you'll put it in the scene one, you'll hear like a loud screaming. You don't want that. You want it to sound like like it's like a whisper, like it's whispering to you or it's, or it's like paper tearing or something. And just do that. And then you'll get a fuck ton of body if you just leave it, it like like whispering like that. Basically, you want it just under the surface, but enough to still pull air in from the surface. Um, yeah, watch a bunch of videos. Uh, Where do you get Khalifa Farm oat milk? Because I didn't see it in the supermarket. Do you have? Do you like order, I order it? Order it from Amazon. Okay. And my my Echo tells me every time that I need more. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the barista blend, so it's made specifically for for frothing. And I okay. will drop a link in the chat right now. So I like this YouTuber James Hoffman, and because he's a coffee guy, uh, and he developed, he wor worked in conjunction with the company to develop their his own kind of oat milk, um, and I got it, and it's not that good. I don't like it. I like the Cleveland Farms more. Uh, Haley Rabbit says Barista Blend is at Shoprite in in Plainview, or Woodbury, or whatever. Interesting. Well, it's it's cheap on Amazon. Six pack for twenty five bucks. I think that's pretty good. Okay. And it lasts. It's not like regular milk. It lasts for a long time. I just leave it in a cabinet. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're good. Are you good? Yeah, I'm. I'm good. We went late today. We spent a long time doing a tier list. But you know what? Look, um, we did important work. We did important work today for the for the gaming community as a whole. And you yeah. might you know listen. You might not appreciate us now. But when you're old and you're telling your kids about this day, yes. you will appreciate us. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can check us out over there on demand. Whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast, your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Guys, you guys see my, uh, I, pu I put up the, the neon sign. Look at how cool. Yay. Yay. Um, anyway. I'll probably be on tomorrow because I got a head start on my video this week. So uh, Wednesday, I will be streaming. Yay. All um, right. I've been trying to learn how to speed run the original Mario Brothers. And I got news for you. It's going well. I thought you knew how to speed run that game. Not. No, I, I knew how to <laughs> beat the game quickly, but not speed mm -hmm. run. I did a wrong warp the other day. Come on, oh. dude. <laughs> We're making progress. All right, everybody who's here, go watch uh, Jiggy right now. Uh, they are doing a podcast, and Scootish is on it. So go over there and give them a bunch of shit. Yeah. Uh, and I'll see you tomorrow and Thursday for a regular video, uh, which is going to be on the Eve Spectrum Monitor, high frame rate gaming on your new consoles. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. That one's for uh for Emily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>